Hi there everybody, it's Martin Twycross here with another video short. This video is a clip all about confidence and mediumship from a course that I ran titled The Confident Medium. The course was designed to help people develop confidence in their mediumship. And in this clip I talk about what confidence is and the various degrees of confidence. Using a model of confidence I also talk about the issues that are associated with overconfidence. I then give a number of examples from mediumship to show how lack of confidence and overconfidence manifest. Check out the description and the comments below for a link to the Confident Medium course and I do hope that you enjoy this video. So whenever I teach about anything I always have to get definitions. I love a good definition. You know, for me, um, if I asked you all what confidence meant, you'd all probably have different definitions. So what I did is I went to three different uh, dictionaries to get definitions. And they are there. So first de definition, which I like the most, is being sure of your abilities and having trust in yourself. Second definition is the belief that you're able to do something well. The third definition is to feel sure about your abilities, qualities or ideas. And you notice I've got a little asterisk behind each of these definitions because it generally applies to a specific area or a specific task. You know, some people have wide ranging confidence issues, but for other people, it's something that's specific that triggers the lack of confidence generally. So that's kind of a definition of confidence. And one of them is a feeling, one of them is a belief, Wanting them, one of them is being sure. Now, how do I teach you to have a feeling or a belief or being sure of yourself? It's not an easy thing to do, is it? You know, it's kind of a, it's something you have or you don't have you might argue. Do you have it or don't you have it? But there's a process we can go through that helps push you in the direction of having greater confidence and that's what the plan is to work through in this course. And if we actually look at the root of the word confidence, it comes from Latin, confidere, meaning with trust, which is why I prefer the first definition of being sure of your abilities and having trust in yourself because it brings in that word to have trust. Some other people equate confidence to self-worth or self-esteem, but for me, they're slightly, they have slight different nuances. Um, generally, if you have self-worth, self-esteem issues, you are lacking confidence generally in one or more areas. But you may have no self-esteem or self-worth issues, but still have confidence issues with certain triggers, certain tasks, certain specifics. Does that all make sense? So there's my definition. And the thing is, there's degrees of confidence. It's important to remember with lack of confidence that it's, it's, there's degrees of it. Some people have a wide ranging lack of confidence and it applies to many things, many areas of their life, many tasks, activities, many scenarios. You know, I have a lack of confidence to do flying. I have a lack of confidence in my driving. I have a lack of confidence in anything that involves being in front of people and Generally, a wide-ranging lack of confidence is generally goes hand-in-hand hand with self-worth and self-esteem issues, generally, as a general rule of thumb. Not all cases, but generally. So whenever I'm talking with a theory, the theory is kind of a general theory. It's, there will be outliers and there will be people who don't fit the theory, but generally that's the case. So then there's people who have co confidence, lack of confidence in a specific skill or activity. For example, mediumship. You know, I'm fine at driving, I'm fine at parenting, I'm fine at controlling the video and using my phone, but when it comes to doing mediumship, oh, I've got some serious confidence issues there. That's what I call a skill or activity specific lack of confidence. And then we can have a task specific lack of confidence. For example, with mediumship, you don't mind doing mediumship in uh, your circles and classes, you don't mind doing mediumship in sittings. However, when it comes to standing up in front of an audience and doing platform and doing demonstrating, that's where the confidence issue kicks in. It could be a fear of public speaking. It could be a fear of embarrassment. It could be a fear of failure. It could be a fear, fear, fear of being assessed, being judged. All sorts of different factors that it could be within the mix. It could be, it could be, any, it could be all of them. <laughs> so that's what I would call a task specific um, lack of confidence. And then 
we drilling down even more, we get into scenario specific lack of confidence. So you're fine with sit-ins, you're fine with demonstrating, you're fine with all of it, except you're not fine with somebody there with a clipboard assessing you. Uh, maybe if you go to the Arthur Finley College and they do demonstrations in the evenings and you get assessed by one of the tutors, that there's a lot more pressure involved there, clearly. And some people don't like being judged. Some people don't like being assessed. It brings, it brings bad issues into play. So that's a scenario where demonstrating generally you're fine unless you're being assessed. And then we can get down into specific triggers. So there may be somebody who's fine at mediumship, fine at demonstrating in all scenarios. However, when they're demonstrating, they have a crisis of confidence under certain triggers. Like the recipient says no to them all the time and the link is not taken or they have to let a link go. Your first link is not being understood. You have to let it go. Your second link's not being understood. You've got to let that go. At that point, I must admit, it takes a very sure, uh, sure, sure-footed medium to keep staying with it once you start encountering challenges like that. So triggers are very, very common. And so when I asked people what their issues are, there was a, a proportion of people who are what I call your wide rangers, people who have confidence issues across the board. And really, this first class targets them more than others. And then we have people who've got skill specific confidence issues and that's quite clear or task specific problems with demonstrating problems with uh, working in front of an audience problems with assessments etc we've got the scenario specific people and then we've got the trigger people and so some people may be great at all of it have very little confidence issues at all but it's just the triggers so if you like the classes the classes start in very broad, wide ranging. And then as we go down, I'm trying to narrow it down and focus it into mediumship more and more. It's a bit like a funnel effect, really. So some of you may say, well, I didn't think there's enough mediumship in this first class. Uh, I'm going to talk of mediumship. And I, I understand where you'd be coming from because I'm trying to do a much wider, wider view of that. And the thing is, this class is not just about confidence in mediumship. It's about confidence that could be applied to anything in your life. And that's the good news. So even if you haven't got so many issues with your mediumship, you can apply it to other aspects of your life. I'm giving you life skills. And is confidence a skill we can learn? I'd say yes and no to that. Yes, to a degree. But deep-rooted, deep, deep-seated deep issues that affect your confidence, it, you know, the, it may be on the scope of even this, this series of classes to resolve them. But it may give you a great deal of insight into them and a great deal of understanding of where they came from and allow you over a period of time to work with them. You may need to work with a therapist in some cases. You may need to uh, do a great deal of your own self-development. You know, fixing issues in our life, it's, it's all self-development. It's not an easy fix. Generally, it takes time, it takes energy, it takes practice to keep working with it, to keep working at it. And you all know me, I, I love a good diagram. So the confidence model. So on the, on the uh, axis coming up to the top, it says benefit along the bottom is amount of confidence. So the more confidence we have, generally the greater benefit it gives us. But then you get to a point where it begins to fall off at the top. And then more, too much confidence beyond that can be negative and can really take away a lot of the benefits that confidence gives you. So we, it's kind of like a, a, uh, an inverted U-shaped curve this and so on the left hand side we, we're lacking in confidence to some degree in the middle there we have the ideal confidence and really you could argue that you could go, it could go a little bit either side of that actually and still be pretty good so we could widen it out quite dramatically and it'd still be fairly good and then we get into overconfidence and overconfidence can be a problem uh, you know certainly within mediumship when I see an overconfident medium work, they think they're fabulous, but they're not. And they make a lot of errors, a lot, create a lot of issues, but they believe they're perfect. They believe they're fabulous. They believe they're always right. They believe that any problems in the room, it's somebody else's fault. Blame someone else. And for those of you who've seen my uh, little snippet on YouTube, if you haven't, I highly recommend it. Mediums who blame others. In fact, practically all the mediums who blame others generally fall into the overconfidence. So... The overconfident mediums were great for me because they gave me a huge amount of teaching material. <laughs> Isn't that wonderful, eh? So that's my, that's my model of confidence.
It's relatively simple, straightforward, and I hope you understand that. So let's now flip to the other end of the spectrum. What happens if you're overconfident? Yeah, if we're overconfident, we, 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 we're not just sure of ourselves, we're totally sure of ourselves. We're not just sure of our abilities, we're absolutely totally confident in our abilities. And that can manifest itself as a bit egotistical, it can that manifest itself as arrogant. Being massively overconfident means often means you're not grounded, it means you're not open to reality. It can ultimately uh, move you to being delusional. People who are overconfident tend to attack other people or blame other people. They tend not to always, uh, you know, we don't always take personal responsibility. And then we have uh, overconfidence can make people very selfish. It's all about you. You're the one, uh, you're always right. It's you're, you're the one who everyone should be watching. Your centre of attention. And often with overconfidence, we, we believe we know everything. We believe we've achieved that level. The overconfident medium believes that that's it. They're there. They're at the pinnacle of mediumship. Now, I believe that we never stop learning with mediumship. Mediumship is a lifelong journey. We never stop. We're always learning. And if we ever believe we can't keep learning, then for me, you become egotistical and arrogant. So for me, if you're a know-it-all, again, it's that sign of overconfidence. I, I, I know that till the day I die, I will keep learning about my own mediumship. I will keep growing the skills and, and moving forward with it. So yeah, so basically, if you're overconfident, you're not grounded, you often can be quite imbalanced. Uh, so that, that's, a, that's a key. So there, there are all the aspects of overconfidence. So this is an interesting little table about to, to, just to demonstrate the differences between some, a medium who lacks confidence, a medium who is confident, and a medium who is overconfident. So these are just a few, there's a bit of humor in here somewhere as well. So if we lack confidence, we might say we don't know that much about mediumship. I don't really know what I'm doing even. Uh, but a confident medium would say, I know a lot, but I haven't got all the answers. I don't know everything. And an overconfident medium would say, I know it all and I'm the expert and I've reached the pinnacle of knowledge. Similarly, if we look at me how mediumship works, the medium who lacks confidence would say, my mediumship often doesn't work. The confident medium would say, my mediumship usually works. And the overconfident mediumship would the overconfident medium would say my mediumship always works. Even when they're getting it wrong, they still refuse to admit that it's not working. They're just oblivious to it. This is where we get deluded, you see. And speaking of getting it wrong, if you lack confidence, you might say I often get it wrong. The confident medium accepts that occasionally, yeah, you will get it wrong. None of us are perfect. We, we don't get every single statement of evidence right. How can we? But the overconfident medium, my mediumship always works. If they're saying no to me, it's just they can't remember. If they're saying no to me, it's their bad memory. If they're saying no to me, it's, it's because they don't know. Put it in your bag and take it home and you'll figure it out. And the medium is always right. Always. The mediumship always works. And speaking of it's right, always right. Next line. Medium lacking confidence, I often get it wrong. The confident medium, I occasionally get it wrong. The overconfident medium, I never get it wrong. Similarly with direction. Now, direction is probably is something you have to develop. That takes time to develop within mediumship. When you're working on platform, it takes time generally to develop direction. I would argue that I don't always have direction. Sometimes I know, sometimes I don't. So a medium lacking confidence, I rarely have direction. The confident medium, I sometimes have direction. The overconfident medium, my direction is never wrong. I always know where I'm, who I'm with. I'm with you. They're saying no to you, but I know I'm with you. I'm never wrong. Generally, they say, I always trust spirit. Spirit always give me, and I'm always accurate. <laughs> the person's going, I can't take a thing. <laughs> so being at fault. So the medium lacking confidence would say, yeah, generally, it's a, if, if there's a fault, it's me. I'm usually at fault. A confident medium would be like, well, I can be at fault, but let's see if there's another reason why. The overconfident medium, I'm never at fault, someone else is. It's always someone else's fault, blame the other person. 
and if that's why I say that that video clip from uh, ethics on uh, mediums who blame others it's great to watch you know uh, you can blame spirit you can blame your recipient you can blame your audience you can blame everybody but yourself and of course no personal responsibility hence we have to have that degree of personal responsibility to be willing to admit we get it wrong be willing to admit that we can be at fault to be willing to admit that we don't know it all and then the last one working with an audience and um, yeah the medium lacks confidence is worried the audience won't like them we're worried they won't connect with an audience the confident medium is they will do their best to connect with the audience but whether the audience takes to them well we'll see you know I work in front of audiences some they're laughing along with you having a great time others sitting looking as if they're miserable but there's nothing you can do about it you just got you do your best to connect with the audience and if it works go with it the overconfident medium the audience had better love me and if they don't it's their problem their problem so if you like that kind of tries to put some of that in perspective for you in terms of actually how and I'm not talking to a medium lacking confidence I'm not talking about a medium who's just starting out because a medium just starting out yeah we'd expect them to to not get a lot of things done but someone who's just just not confident with that skill say that platform skill which is what we're talking about here so hopefully that that helps you I hope If you found this video helpful then do hit the like button and subscribe to my channel for more videos like this.